CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. And Andrew Strauss, I'm, I'm not giggling at you, mate. I know you're commentating in the other box. It must be very hard to watch. It's incredibly hard. I, I mean, fair play to Australia because you know what your Aussies are like. When you're on top, you're good at bullying the English. And <laughs> we've seen a lot of that today. I mean, Shane Watson was extraordinary. Uh, but for, for an Englishman who... We all came here expecting to win, to be honest with you. The yeah. players expected to win, the, the commentators expect to win. And it's just been such an incredible turnaround. It's quite hard to describe and it's hard to take. I, th I want to thank you, Slats, for inviting what? me in today. You know, to rub it into an, know, an ex captain of England. Strauss, mate, thank you. Your timing's <laughs> impeccable, mate. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, that's all right. It was interesting talking to Michael Clark this morning, though. He, he said that he, he, he was obviously delighted with where Australia were at. Yeah. Um, but he, he was more delighted with the, the pr two previous test matches because yeah. they always felt here at the Wacker that they were going to be hard to beat the Australians. Mm. But winning at the Gabba and winning in Adelaide have set up the momentum to play well here yeah. at the Wacker where they thought they would play well. And what's been outstanding is that it's been the same. 11 all three test matches which is different to previous years easy to maintain an 11 when you're winning let's have a look at Watson's highlights this morning he actually converted a 50 into 100 which is another big moment for him and I just got the feeling Strauss here that the game dictated terms this morning and allowed him to free up and not get the intenseness of maybe what he's been taking to the crease before this yeah it's a good point I think he's taking a leaf out of Dave Warner's book I mean Warner's coming and play that aggressive style of cricket which he can do so well in 2020 cricket. We know Shane Watson can play like that as well. Maybe we need to see that a little bit more from him. But these were the perfect kind of circumstances for him to play in that, that manner. And it was humiliating. You know, someone like James Anderson, England, one of England's greatest bowlers, getting whacked over his head consistently. Oh. That's pretty hard for him it to take It was phenomenal. Well. Very hard for Swan as well. He got the uh, pummeling earlier. Let's have a look at the dismissal. And it is laughable because here he goes. He just thinks, oh, you're not going to catch that. You can uh, bet on that being taken. He doesn't run, then he gets run out. Well, I read the interview that you had with him, Slats, just after he got out. It was great that he, he allowed us to access straight after he got out. He actually said, look, I was told as a kid, <laughs> when you knock the ball up in the air, you've got to run. So, and he didn't. He put the head down. He was having so much fun that he got 100 so quickly. Oh, no, he's dropped it. Breslin says, well, OK, I don't get the wicket, but you're out anyway. I'll yeah. run you out. Uh, poor Belly. Belly's head dropped and went, oh, how have I dropped that? That was a sitter. <laughs> anyway, the wicket. And that's a good lesson for the kids at home. Never yeah. think that if you drop a catch, you can't get a run out. Yeah. Bailey, I think he's worth having a look at too, that over, the final over of 28. I mean, it's one of the most productive overs in, in Test cricket. Yeah, that is demoralising for England. When you've got England's premier bowler, James Anderson, to be fair to him, he's had to bowl extra overs because Broad's not out there and he's bowling an over here to Australia who are just looking to tee off. And George Bailey, who's got into this team because of his one-day form, really, he's really good in these sort of situations in a one-day game. When people are bowling length, he's a good little striker. He whips them away through square leg, he runs them down to third man, and then you try and hit the stumps, you don't quite get it right, you disappear over long on for a couple of sixes. But 28 off the over and Michael Clark gets to declare with all the momentum. And mm. poor old Alistair Cook, we were having a bit of a chat off air, uh, Strauss here, that that's really tough for an, for an opening batsman and a captain. You've just seen your premier fast bowler go for 28, and you're now the opening batsman who's mm. got to go out there and face the first ball, and you get an absolute jaffer off uh, Ryan Harris. Well, we've got this uh, here at Strauss here. It's uh, an unplayable delivery. Uh, it's an unbelievable delivery first up. It's just you don't expect one like that. Ryan Harris has been so impressive all the way through the series. It's all the talk about Mitchell Johnson. I think Harris has actually been the best bowler on display, and that is the perfect delivery to any left-hander early on. And it just shows momentum so heavily with Australia. Almost mm. expected that to happen mm. after mm. what happened this morning with Shane Watson. All right, mate, let's get into you and your view, firstly, on Alastair Cook and how, as a captain, you've been there before, how he'd be feeling because it was demoralising this morning. And I'm keen to get your view on what's happened this particular tour. Yeah, well, firstly, I mean, these are incredibly hard circumstances for any captain, especially a young captain. You've got your senior players who aren't performing. You, you mm. can almost expect your junior ones, you're going to get a couple of inconsistent performances, but none of these senior players have stood up. I mean, I, I look at it and think maybe long term this might be the making of Alistair Cook because mm. it gives him the opportunity to stand up there to the rest of the mm. team and say, listen, guys, this isn't good enough. You're the senior players. You play a lot of cricket. You need to do things my way now. Mm. It's not about doing things your way. You're going to do them my way. And it, it might just give him that little bit of kind of... Uh, allow him to stand 
above and a, a little bit away mm. from some of those players that are very good friends of his. I think long term English cricket needs to have a look at this and go kind of maybe we've been cruising a little for a little mm -hmm. bit too long now. We need to shake things up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's a fair point. I think he'll also learn. He, he's a fine player, Alistair Cook. Don't worry about that. 100 test His matches. stats are phenomenal. Aver averages 47, I think, 2,500s. And, you know, the first, the youngest man he will be to 8,000 runs. So he can obviously play this game. But you've got to learn as a captain as well as you go along. Mm. And I think what he will learn is that there is times you've got to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm. I think they, he does t tend to sit back a little bit mm. and wait for the game to develop. And I think what's happened in this series is Michael Clark's probably the other way. He's always and sometimes over, overly aggressive, but when you've got Johnson and Warner firing, that works well. But there is times you've got to, you've got to hold them and times you've got to fold them. I'd like to see Alistair Cook just be a little bit more aggressive when he's got the opportunity to go for the throw. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And also, you know, his style of captaincy is very much leading by example with the bat. I think we've got to the stage now where he needs to just move a little bit further from that. Mm -hmm. he, his runs are almost a given. He struggled a bit in this series, but I like the way he kind of got stuck in in that first innings and, and, and made something, made a score when he wasn't in great mm -hmm. nick. But yeah. he's got to give more. I think in the field now, he's got to kind of go, right, guys, we can't just play that same brand of cricket that, that worked so well for us a few years ago. The, the, everything's changing all the time in international cricket. Australia have learnt about how England play and they've gone at England, mm. someone like Dave Warner, to disrupt mm. those England bowlers. England need to kind of move with the times yeah. as well now. All right. Well, you, uh, I was only just thinking, getting into your career, you're a little bit like um, Tony Gregg and we miss Tony. Um, South African born. <laughs> You've captained England and you've got a very strong link to Australia. You might be living in Australia, but you've married an Australian. So, I mean, you've got this sort of interesting <laughs> heritage. Um, what, are you, what are your sort of thoughts on your career now? You had a very successful period as captain and, you know, and obviously it was very fruitful as a left-hand bat. Yeah, I mean, I, I think anyone who retires, you look back at your career and go, God, it's unbelievable I achieved as much yeah, as I did. I think, matches. you know, anyone who... who plays one test match you're pretty happy but to to play 100 tests but also to be involved in some of English cricket's great moments you think back to the 2005 Ashes this series here 2010-11 I mean I think that was probably the best England have ever played over here mm. and certainly in my lifetime and it was just one of those special moments when yeah. in a team environment you know that you're onto something here you can't yes. quite work out why but you know here we go, the jumping will yeah, start in a minute. What's this jumping. jumping thing? The Aussies don't do that. We <laughs> just love that. Is that a dance you do? The sprinkler you do? It's not, it's not a good dance, I know that much, but there's not much jumping going on for the England players at the moment. I, I mean, almost the fact that England have struggled so much here this, this time shows how special it was mm. to play that sort of brand of cricket out here last time. And, yeah. and almost, you know, the boot was very much on the other foot. By the end of that series, we were kind of in complete control against Australia. Yeah. And that Gabba test match, which we had a few highlights of, that was interesting because you, you got a duck in the first inning, steered one to, to Huss, I think. That's second, right, yeah. Second did. innings, you make 100. Cookie makes 230 odd, yeah. I think. And you make one for 517. And all of a sudden, Australia thinking they're going to win that game. No, you're not. Then you go to Adelaide and win. Then Australia come here, as they often do, and win here at the Wacker. So it's one all with the two big tests to go. That, that innings of yours and Alistair Cook's on about day three or four of that... Um, of that Gabba test match really held England in that series and you went on to win it. Yeah, I mean, we, we get so much so much chat before the, the first test of an Ashes series about how important that first test is. And it, it's very true. Mm. I mean, we wrestled the momentum yep. away from Australia in that series and never let them back. We had a bit of an aberration here in Perth, but yeah. generally we played very well, very good cricket after that. And the same in this series. I mean, England won the first day and since then I don't think they've won mm. any, hardly mm. won a uh, session since then. So it's yeah. been all one-way traffic, all Australia. And, of course, I'm delighted for you. Well done, guys. <laughs> now, uh, all of your domestic career, Middlesex, playing at Lords, what's that like? I mean, we know as a touring team it was the, 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 the real bucket list stuff, wasn't mm. it? It was a, yeah. an absolute thrill and honour to play there. You were turning up every other day playing there. Did it still hold the mystique and the history and tradition for you? I think that's one of the amazing things about Lords is it does retain that. Even though you've played, I played there for you know, 11, 12, 13 years, every time I played it still felt special. I mean, 
Uh, I, I actually sometimes I look at foreign players who've come to Lords and they've almost been overcome by the occasion. I think yeah, it's someone so like it Ricky happen. Ponsing or Sachin Tendulkar so determined to get 100 there that it just becomes a bit too much for them. I never had that. I, I just think it was a great place to play cricket. I, I was lucky enough to play with some great cricketers as well, likes of Gus Fraser and um, Phil Tufnell. Justin Langer, of course, was our overseas player for a long yeah. time. So very special times for me. Very special for Slats to play Lord. You see his first thing, when he got 100 there, run down the pavilion kissing his helmet, carrying on like a pork chop. <laughs> yeah, I did too. The MCC members have never seen anything like, oh no, I don't think this is appropriate. <laughs>